Welcome all. Today we have got Tony Berg, uh, our legal principal and director for Strategic Legal Solutions. Tony comes with a wealth of experience in law firm management, having been the principal of his own practice for what more than 30, 30 years. years 30 years. And uh, this uh, today we are looking to get Tony's insights in. Uh, law firms looking at uh, legal process outsourcing and innovation and, and all things relating to how firms can better manage resourcing. So the first topic that we are looking at today, Tony, is uh, why should law firms look at legal process outsourcing as a resourcing solution in the current climate? The decision to engage in uh, legal process outsourcing seemed completely logical. Um, it didn't strike me at all as being innovative. It struck me as being um, a, a planned, managerially appropriate forward step for my firm and one which was guaranteed to, to result in greater profitability for the firm. And when I look back over the more than decade that I've been involved with SBA, that proves to be the case. That, that has been our experience. What came to mind were two experiences that I had, which may seem a little bit irrelevant to the question you asked, but mm -hmm. they certainly informed my decision making at the time. And the first one occurred when I was lucky to represent the Law Institute of Victoria at an international bar association mm -hmm. conference in Buenos Aires. And uh, they had a, a number of presentations. One of the presentations was by a practice manager from one of the Australia's leading law firms. I should be careful not to name names. Mm -hmm. But his task was to talk about the experience of his firm in knowledge management. And the lecture started off with perhaps 120 people in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And he outlined this scenario of data mining. His firm had acted for a number of workers' compensation insurers. And, of course, workers' compensation insurers have an interest in managing risk yeah. because that reflects on exposure and so cost. And of his own initiative, the firm, or the firm had conducted some research into its own database of claims and come up with the conclusion that it, it had a role in risk management advice. And so one thing led to another and the firm developed its own data mining and risk management entity which it spun off as a separate business. And this was mind-blowing stuff for mm -hmm. a, a, an audience of lawyers, so much so that by the end of the presentation, the audience had dropped from about 120 to about 20. And I was one of the ones left mm -hmm. uh, as a former personal injury lawyer. I was totally intrigued. So that was the first episode. The second episode was a presentation, I think, to the Australian Bar Association. I'm, I'm a bit hazy in my memory about it, but I do remember the presenter. It was Professor... Tanya Sorden, mm -hmm. who's now the Dean of the Law Faculty at the University of Newcastle mm -hmm. in New South Wales. And it was all about the implications of um, data mining, artificial intelligence and stuff like that, um, and the ethical implications of it. And she chose as her presentation the decision-making in, in sentencing in the criminal courts. And essentially she um, drew together a team of AI people and mathematicians and distilled a logic tree to illustrate what was happening in the, uh, the, the magistrates courts or the local courts around the country. And when you heard her talk, you rapidly came to the conclusion that um, so much of what we do as lawyers is uh, systematic, uh, capable of being distilled to um, 
fairly regimented decision processes and the like. Um, so much so that those of us who came out of that lecture were left with the implication that in years to come, we can likely look forward to courts having machine-based decision-making in sentencing for criminal matters, mm -hmm. perhaps with a discount if you choose the AI route. Um, so I had this in the background, and um, it was in influencing my thinking in a number of ways. And, and then I um, had the opportunity to get together with a management consultant friend of mine, Sam Copeland, who you know, yeah. and uh, it was he uh, who engaged me in conversation about legal process outsourcing and led me to pick up the phone and call you. And um, that's what led me in the direction that I don't regret since the day it started. Um, so it's been very productive. Now, as to the benefits, mm -hmm. I, I think it's self-evident. Um, there is the opportunity to look to SBA to assist in rudimentary things like um, secretarial support, database management, um, um, opening files, uh, diary notes, routine entry level um, LPO, but with the development of, of new and improved ways of doing things, that extends to applications that may yet involve artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. um, certainly database management, that's one of them, uh, maybe some machine learning. Um, and the types, as to the types of work to be done, um, if you'd asked me that question a decade or more ago, I, I would have rattled off a number of things like uh, um, dictation support, uh, rudimentary secretarial tasks. But nowadays, my attitude is completely different. Uh, I think the answer to the question about what type of work you can outsource is it should be anything except the high level creative and bespoke areas of work that we we pride ourselves on providing um, i'm someone who gets bored very easily i don't like repeating myself and i don't like doing law that requires me rolling the arm over and repeating myself down the days of my career um, so I see a role for myself uh, as a bespoke, higher level uh, consultant in the law rather than a hack repetition lawyer. And uh, if I look back at some of my reading, uh, there's an English legal futurist, I think his name's Richard Suskind, mm -hmm. uh, who more than 10 years ago, uh, predicted that the future of the legal profession is much different to what it is today, and there will only be four or so discrete areas of law, and one of those only will be the bespoke uh, higher level area of law. Um, in, in essence, uh, Susskind postulates that Technology will overtake much of the areas of law, and that's an area where SBA has developed considerable expertise. You now have the ability to operate a much more sophisticated application of uh, legal practice than most law firms, certainly most small law firms. Uh, so that's the way the world's going. I think the key advantages for legal process outsourcing are these. First of all, you can solve resource constraints. You can have much greater flexibility in the way you run your practice if you have that resource available to you and trained in the way you do things. Um, it's, it's like having a football team uh, with an interchange bench of 10 players rather than two or three. 
you've got that depth of talent that you can call upon. Uh, secondly, uh, you can protect yourself against becoming overly dependent on key people. Yeah. Uh, your intellectual property is protected and safe and there's a scope to distill from it the higher level knowledge that makes you a better practitioner. Think of it as insurance, if you like. Yeah. It, it, uh, I can't remember quite where I read it, but someone had done the economic analysis as to the cost of losing a key person. Uh, I think it was in Canada somewhere. And they, can, uh, they came to the conclusion that the cost of losing a key person was equivalent to the annualised salary of that person. Mm -hmm. So you've got the recruitment costs, the induction costs, the training costs, etc. You know, it's it's a very expensive people, uh, sorry, a very expensive process in law firms to lose key people. Um, the other, the, the third key benefit uh, from legal process outsourcing is your competitors are already doing it. Yeah. Um, my Small firm, which uh, more than a decade ago uh, was much smaller than it is today, uh, got the jump on our mm -hmm. competitors by embracing SBA. Um, the, the firm which I led as a sole practitioner in 2008 had about six people. Um, now with SBA uh, in the background supporting us, uh, we're about 20 people, and that doesn't include the, the number of people in uh, SBA who are also part of our team. Um, and the fourth and the most important point is you make more money. You run your firm more profitably, and you do so without exploiting anyone, mm -hmm. and you get access to uh, a much higher level of managerial support and data feedback than you would ever have um, had you not embraced SBA. And around the making more money, Tony, the, what you mentioned is also relevant that the opportunity cost minimization is also a big part of making oh, yes. more money. Yes. That it's uh, not just a labor arbitrage of uh, deploying SBS team, but what is your highly skilled in-house team not doing? that frees them up to do more billing work, which True. implicitly improves margin on a longer term basis. True. And that's really what we find is the critical factor in margin improvement for firms on making more money when they deploy uh, outsourcing as a resourcing um, a solution, as part of the resourcing solution. And come to think of it, there are also obvious savings in um, occupancy costs, mm -hmm. um, utility costs, um, uh, legal professional indemnity insurance costs, yada, yada, yada. There, yeah. there are m multiple levels upon which savings follow just by the process. Absolutely, and also part of that is the cost of training. Uh, that when a firm is uh, training uh, the team SBA, that's a one off training investment. Mm. Over a period of time, that knowledge is retained, built upon. So if you contrast that with the situation where the firm loses a team member in six months' time and have to retrain a new team member again, in a smaller team, those sort of retraining takes up a lot disruptive. of disruptive, and uh, so you smooth those out also through your uh, by reducing the opportunity cost of training because what ends up happening is the knowledge that is built in Team SBA it remains and it's sustained without. Team as we are continually coming back and saying, train me in this again in six months' time. So you are removing the uh, sort of cost of losing team members and all the training that goes with that. It's one of the key opportunities also for firms. To draw it all together, Arthur, I, I'd summarize it this way. Um, by, by embracing legal process outsourcing and having a robust discussion with SBA, looking for the 
guidance that's available, you will have fewer occasions when you wake up at three o'clock in the morning worrying about the management of your, your law firm. And believe me, in the 30 years or so I've been involved in law firm management, uh, that's, that's the burden that kills you. No, absolutely, Tony, and you, are, you have significant experience in that. <laughs> And, uh, and and that that all that in itself is, uh, as you said, is a big reason where strategically and operationally uh, using uh, legal process outsourcing makes a lot of sense for firms, big or small. Exactly. Thank, Thank you, Father, for your time today and your insights on this uh, topic, uh, especially in a climate where firms are struggling to get good people and um, and. Looking at resource and solutions is no longer uh, restricted um, to the traditional recruitment methods. Thanks for your time today.